All right, this is day number 44 of building in public and showing you how I built my business. Might be successful business, might be not successful, whatever. I am building, I'm not giving up until it is successful. <laughs> and it's day number 44. That's crazy. 44 days building in public every every single day, showing you how to build something. Trying to, I mean, showing, I know showing because I'm not really the biggest, the biggest business guru there or marketer or whatever. Uh, but when I started with, when I when I had an idea of starting a business, I wish I had those type of streams where you can just go and hang out with people who also want to build a business. So what I'm building, I am building here a coding school and we have a few updates here. First, the sign up finally works as expected. And second, we have here a few UI improvements and we fixed quite quite a bit of bugs. So everything looks quite, quite good. Um, yeah, we even have the pricing, so you can even go and even buy it. That's, that's what we have so far. And the whole coding school, we have the first completely, the first, the first module, we have most of the second module and one topic in the third module. And I have, I have basically the whole program already lined out. It's just that I need to bring this whole program into the into into this 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 website and we started here a community and a community of people who also feel like they want to build a business till 10 10k a month the community that's interesting because a lot of people joined but the not that many people participate in the discussions and i guess that's either so two problems and this is this is totally like what what mistake that I've made. Um, when I invited everyone to the community, I didn't think it through. Like I didn't think, okay, so what will people actually do once they join? <laughs> what I for some reason I had this uh, idea that people are gonna be just communicating with each other on their own. But I feel like what I should have done is organizing events, for example. Or trying to form because just just smashing all people into the Discord won't build a community, right? Mm, so I feel like so I feel like I definitely didn't didn't work out enough uh, about this 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 Discord channel. But we're still like if you go there, for example, and if you ask for the feedback for your business idea, we're gonna review it on the stream. So it's uh, yeah, I mean we have really cool people there, but the activity is not as is not what I wish it was. But it's also not bad. It's it's fine. I I don't really care that much now about this um, about uh, about like building something something here because it's a hobby for me. So it's a hobby. My main business uh, is what I'm showing here. So I'm gonna write welcome to the day forty four. Join Discord to build a business. 10k month and all right let me check that i'm actually live i am live that's good i'm live here and i should be live on twitch as well Yes, I'm live. Nice, nice. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Um, the first thing that I want to do is actually I want to watch this video because I show I I saw this this guy and I know this guy from uh, my early YouTube journey. And I kind of want to see what he, what is he doing. And uh, this is interesting. I don't recommend YouTube Shorts for to most creators right now. And this is interesting. That's been my feeling as well. I don't feel like posting shorts. I tried. But I don't feel I don't feel like YouTube Shorts is a good idea, in comparison to for, exa for example TikTok. I think TikTok is a good idea, but YouTube Shorts, the algorithm of YouTube Shorts is so bad that I feel like it's it's bringing completely wrong people. Yeah, let's see what he has to say. 
I have worked directly with many YouTube creators recently, and by directly, I mean access to analytics, real conversations with these creators. And I keep seeing this happen, so I'm gonna request that before you comment, just hear me out here. Howdy, howdy, everyone. Nate here. I have been very interested in YouTube Shorts since the beginning of YouTube Shorts. But as I've been working with creators like yourself, I kept seeing a few concerning patterns. So imagine my intrigue when recently I came across this video from the channel The Game Theorists, with a video titled, Why Everyone Hates YouTube Shorts and You Should Too. Naturally, it piqued my interest. Now, while this channel run by MatPat typically covers games and gaming, occasionally we'll get a diamond like this one that's commentary on YouTube as a platform. And this video perfectly summed up a few things I was also seeing. Just outright pay people to make them. No one really took them seriously still. Which is why this year, in 2023, YouTube started pushing them hard. Now, when you open your homepage on desktop, Top, you see shorts. When you open your phone to pick a video, oh, you've just randomly showed up in the shorts feed. Sometimes when you're watching YouTube on the TV and it's like, here, would you like to watch a short on a TV with a totally different aspect ratio? Sure, why not? YouTube as a platform has been making a huge push for shorts recently by making it appear in a lot of different places. They show on the home screen of YouTube on desktop and mobile, not just... Yeah, this is this is so annoying. Whenever you have you, you, have, you open your phone, and you watch one short, it's hard to get to go back to the videos. Like if you switch between tabs if and switch back to the tab, it's still gonna switch you into the shorts even though you actually want to go to the videos. Yeah, they, they're really pushing it. Really pushing it. The problem is, if I show you my shorts, it's gonna be so hilarious. Because it's so much not what I want. I had... So I think I had my face with the with the YouTube shorts a couple of months ago when I was sick. I think like four months ago. I was sick. So imagine you're sick. You're laying in the bed. You have nothing to do. You're sick. Um, you played some games. You watched some. But, but you're bored, right? It's boring to be sick for like three days. You can do anything, any productive work. And you feel like shit. And you're watching a lot of stuff. And you're bored at some point. So what you do, what you open shorts. You open shorts. I open short shorts and 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 I the first video that I see is about Koran. I am kind of like so far away from caring about Koran and the guy sitting there in the hour sitting there mm, Arabic Arabic subtitles he, here's five reasons why Iran why why Quran is true and blah blah blah. <laughs> this is the first short that I see. Like, what the hell? How can, how can look at the, look at the at the shorts? Like, how can YouTube from those type of things go into the Quran? And I was not using this one uh, before, but that's been that's been my, <laughs> it's been my, ex my my experience back then. Uh, and they quite quite frankly they they improved. Okay, so they improved. They are much 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 better now. But the problem is that I think even even six months ago, shorts, they were decoupled from the videos. So it means that you can, for example, post shorts about Quran, but then you can run um, a YouTube channel about business and that still work, which is super strange, right? Now I think they improved, but still the, the biggest problem with YouTube shorts is that the algorithm is so bad. It was the worst TikTok way algorithm out there. Instagram has way better algorithm than 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 YouTube. Way better. And TikTok, of course, the best one. Just in the shorts feed, as well as, and this one is very weird to me, in search results. Now, this first point Matt Pat is making is that YouTube shorts seem to be kind of taking over the place. I hate it. I hate it when I search for something and I hate it on YouTube. Now, for example, I search um how to build how to build webinar funnels. I get here a few results and then I get people also watched million dollar blueprint. I don't care. Show me more results. Like how many results do you show me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight results. That's like just first, if you search it in Google, that's like first, not even the first page of the Google. And then you get, 6x cheaper than 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 funnel blah, blah blah and then you only start seeing more but it's it's so 
yeah, it's I, I really hate it. And then we get LinkedIn, like, what about for you? What? I don't care about this. Just show me normal results. I'm using search here because I want to search for something. I don't want to get, like, thrown the videos into my face because if I want to do that, I'm going to go here. Right? And the shorts? They are, yeah. So they, they're also pushing shorts whenever you search for something. Like, that's, that's yeah the platform and pushing down long form creators videos if for no other reason than the ui or the user interface of youtube is being dominated by trying to get these shorts seen to creators this surge has had some devastating ripple effects when you go to the home page and suddenly 50 percent of the screen is dominated by short form video it means your long form content gets shared less at the top of the year youtube basically mandated that if you want your channel to continue to be successful shorts have to be part of your video strategy and that's kind of an issue when it's a format that takes time Time and effort to make but basically earns you zero dollars i have seen these effects firsthand also as i've worked with youtube creators especially in the realms of the mid to large size creators or what i might call a momentum zone when a channel is finally starting to reach their pace and seeing some real growth youtube shorts seem to be translating into almost no benefit for these creators now a bit more on what i mean with that here in a moment first i wanted to play one more clip so what is the big issue well outside of the fact that they lose money don't translate to long-term viewers very expensive long form content and feel like a pay to win model on YouTube. Yes, yes, and yes. With that last point of feel like a pay to win model being chance. They feel like chance. You see, after analyzing this and having many, many conversations with creators just like yourself, the first issues crop up on the creator side of things, not even the people watching the shorts. So for you as a creator, creating effective YouTube shorts represents a very different skill set in most cases from standard long-form YouTube content. Because That's what true. it takes to win with YouTube Shorts is very different than long-form content. And that alone isn't really a big issue because we're always learning, we're always acquiring new skill sets. That's kind of the name of the game. You get good at one thing and then you acquire the next skill. And that's what creates that snowball effect or that constant improvement for us as creators. The big issue comes in when you start to look at the other side of the equation, which is the viewer dynamic of YouTube Shorts. This is what I view as the crux of the problem with YouTube Shorts on the platform right now. On the audience side of things, there are two very distinct viewing behaviors. And again, this video from Game Theory put it very well. You see, with long form videos, it's an active experience, meaning you are actively choosing what videos to watch. And then when you watch that video, you say, that was interesting. Maybe you look at the suggested videos and you choose to watch another video. Or maybe you say, I'm gonna go back and refresh, go back to the homepage. What is YouTube serving up for me? So that again, you're choosing which videos to watch. On the short feed, just like other short form content platforms, it is not that way. It is a passive viewing experience. You are not choosing which videos are queued up for you. Your behavior is indirectly whether you like the video or you swipe away quickly. But from my experience, YouTube Shorts in most cases, the audience that wants to watch those YouTube Shorts are in a very different state of mind than an audience that wants to watch long form. Now let me explain yeah. what I mean by that. When I've considered the primary reasons why someone watches YouTube Shorts, I've distilled it down to three things. One, to laugh, learn, or see something new. Two, to get a dopamine hit or distracted because you're bored. Or three, and this is much less common, to keep up with a creator as an influencer, someone that they like, they will just wanna know what's happening for them. Now the important thing to note here, especially with point one, is they're not looking for a long experience with either with learning or entertainment, they just want a micro experience. So this goes down to the fundamental differences between shorts and long form videos, because the strategy you as a creator are looking to implement implement is diametrically different. In fact, as I've worked with these hundreds of creators one-on-one, -on -one, I have been developing strategies primarily for long form, if I'm honest, that you absolutely do want to be aware of, which I'm gonna put a card for you to watch after this if you'd like. But that brings us to what I consider to be the big problem here. As I'm advocating for YouTube creators like yourself, the big problem I am seeing is threefold. Number one, YouTube shorts do not fit most content types or channel niches. It's not to say that a channel about repairing cars, for example, couldn't make an effective YouTube short, it's just very different. A person that wants to know how to fix their car is not necessarily a person that wants to know how to fix their car on the shorts feed. So what ends up happening for many creators is when they add a YouTube shorts to their content mix, it feels forced. Next major issue is they require an entirely separate skill set, which is why I've already said here on this channel, 
If you are starting off or if you don't feel really solid on one or the other, just choose shorts or long form and don't try to do both at once. I've seen it distract the efforts of most people I'm working with. And with that, I need to acknowledge that I have some awareness bias because many of the channels that I work with are not in a heavily entertainment space on YouTube. They're oftentimes more in skill sets or sharing stories. And that brings us to the third major problem I am seeing with YouTube shorts right now. You might remember a while back I published a video to the effect of YouTube shorts are way more useful for all creators at this point because they added this feature of linking to another piece of content on your channel and it was in the UI. They could just tap that other piece of content and you could direct them anywhere else on your channel. And on the surface that seemed awesome. It seemed like it would finally going to accomplish the thing that I wanted YouTube shorts to do and that was build the channel as a whole. Like raise the entire tide of the viewership. They watch YouTube shorts, they find you with YouTube shorts and then they say hey I'm gonna watch your other videos. I'm gonna watch your other YouTube shorts. This is awesome. However, that isn't matching the reality yet. I'm very hopeful that it will, but up to this point, I am not seeing that happen. In fact, as I've had these discussions with YouTube creators, they seem to only slightly affect long form viewership at best. Most of these YouTube shorts viewers are not converting to other types of viewership on most channels. And again, I need to acknowledge here that I do not have access to all of YouTube's data. I, I wish I did, that would be awesome. I just have to operate off of working in this space where my big priority is helping creators like yourself to be successful on this platform. And I'm simply not seeing the value yet. I'm hopeful, but it's not happening yet. All right, now we need to talk solutions because I don't just wanna leave everybody in the lurch of, oh, there's, oh, there's this terrible thing here. So in terms of a big answer to this issue, I actually don't know at this point what I would recommend that the YouTube platform do to solve this because the issue here is more tricky than you might think. I don't think it's just some little UI change, which is what we've seen attempted previously that didn't seem to be really changing things. I think the core issue here is the difference in the behavior and preferences of the two audience consumption models. Because here's what I'm gonna recommend. We talked about all of this. What do I recommend at this point as of publishing this video? Number one, be conscious of where you're allocating your efforts. Don't just do YouTube Shorts because that's what you think everybody should do. And number two, YouTube Shorts still work remarkably well for certain sectors of YouTube. And if that is your experience, I would love to hear what you are doing and how it's working for you. Because there are probably many people. Yeah, so I, I, I agree. I agree. The YouTube Shorts, I tried to do a few of them. Like it's it just doesn't make sense. If you wanna create if you wanna create a really good videos, it doesn't make sense to go with the YouTube Shorts unless you really put a lot of effort in them. So unless you really make them uh, very dynamic, very good, then it doesn't make sense. But it's a separate do you really wanna do that? Like why? Just focus, just take those resources and focus on your main um, main way of doing videos. For me, that would be streaming or just doing normal videos. That That's that's what I think. Yeah, so for me now, I'm not really doing shorts. But TikTok, and again, even even with the, even if you, if even if I would be doing shorts, Still completely different, completely different thing in comparison to TikTok. Because the algorithm isn't that great. Algorithm is... Yeah, the algorithm of shorts is not good. The problem, I don't think that the problem is that the audience doesn't convert. The, the problem is that the audience that want to watch shorts is, is totally different from people who want to watch just normal videos. And... And I think the age of people is less of those who, who are watching shorts on average, on average. At least I know that I'm not watching that many shorts and I prefer the videos. Um, and I, and quite frankly, I, I don't even want to have those type of audience that are watching only shorts. Like that doesn't make sense. I want to have people who are watching long long form content as I do long thoughtful interesting deep content that's the type of people that I want to hang out with that's my rant about about shorts uh, okay so the plan for today is research what topic uh, for Sunday so Sunday here I 
uh, I have put here an event that will be coding full solution from zero. And I did already one stream the last time and it was actually really, really, really good. So I want to, I want to do it again and I want to, <clears throat> I want to develop a solution on Salesforce platform again. And why was I doing it? I'm not really like, this is one day where I'm not really streaming how, I how I'm building a business. The reason for that is because uh, that's my main thing. I'm a developer, right? So I, I'm a Salesforce developer and I want to show, and I'm teaching how to code. I teach Salesforce development. So uh, it, I kind of want to show my skills. And then if people like my skills, maybe they're going to, going to take my course. Right? So I never showed, I never showed my actually skills as a, as a developer. Mm, now I'm going to be showing them each Sunday. Um, yeah. And then I remember there was a, there was a website with projects. Like there was a website, uh, with a lot of different projects. And I totally forgot the name of this website. Totally forgot the name. Let me search for the name. Maybe this one? No, not really. No, not this one. Ah, this one, I found it. I found it, I think. Is it daily projects you can build to improve your coding skills? Yes, exactly. This is this is this is what I wanted. Um, daily challenges showcase your portfolio, support your community. Nice. So this is a really really nice idea, um, and this is something that I also had an idea to implement for Salesforce. Why can't we create 365 projects to build? They're going to go from each possible topic and they're going to be easy to implement like a couple of hours for an experienced developer or maybe a day or two for an inexperienced developer. And we can just do it for free, all right? Why not start coding? Uh, let's say... Please check your email. Okay. Let me check my email. Okay. Okay, so they have the challenge, start challenge, and then. Okay, so they basically have, oh, this is good. Interesting. Uh -huh, so you cannot go, you cannot go and see them unless you go pro. Nice. Pay once and look forever. That's a really good. That's a really good idea. Nice. I like the, the user interface. Yeah. <laughs> Less for Germany, nice. Yeah, so if we implement, we can, we can, this is the, this is the idea that I have for Learn Apex. We could implement uh, for Learn Apex something similar. 
but we can make it for free. And I think it would be a really good lead magnet. I mean, of course, the biggest problem here is to create to create projects. We can start with just just monthly projects. I mean, if you look at this, it's not very hard to like to come up with those things. Right? I bet if I hire someone who is experienced for like one month or full time, um, he will be able to develop those things quite, quite quick. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so this is not something that I will be doing doing right now, but this is just a good... Uh, that goes into the ideas to implement. So, okay, I found the website. That's good. Uh, still doesn't know what topic, <laughs> what what to call it on Sunday. Um, let's see. Apex project ideas. I already, I already googled that. Salesforce Apex project ideas. Okay, restaurant e-management system Salesforce project. Customer searches the menu on the table, size mobile device. Nah. Really, so only one? <laughs> okay. Workflow automation. Nah, all of that is not fun. This is interesting. What are free APIs that we could use? Let's 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 go based on the API. I actually wanna go and maybe implement some API. Okay, public APIs. What is open data? People groups of the world with the fewest followers of Christ? What the hell is that? What the hell is that?
Okay, what's that? Oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. So we can we can create validation script that checks the email of of a certain person. Um, that's interesting. I have an idea what we're gonna be developing. Okay, so the first project, it was, and I can say that it's done, uh, it was LWC plus OpenAI, it's called AI Code Analyzer. That's done. Done, and I can put the link on the GitHub in case I want to go there oops wrong one yeah this one stream okay so this one is done now the idea for the next one would be Check, check the domain of the email, check the educational domains. Um, and we will be developing this thing in my project that I have for mentoring people because that goes very well into the project and I can add it as a, as a, as a, as a new task for people. So, um, where's the CPI? Use this API to check if the users, if the participants, participants email is in the list, if yes, um, if yes, make make a thirty percent sale. And I think it will be like this, trigger on, on insert, then we're gonna have cubal, cubal, then we're gonna have uh, integration, and then we're gonna write, write it in this, uh, let's say update, date field, I would say like this. And it's good because we're going to be able to learn triggers. That's that's good. That's good. So I'm going to modify a little bit the event. And... How can I edit event? How much are you making now? It depends a lot on the month. I would say around two or three K. But it also depends if if I real if I wanna increase it, I could schedule more people for mentoring. Um 
but I'm not doing it on purpose because I want to kind of, I want to launch the courses. So I have a lot of different stuff and ideally in, let's say two, three years, I'm not going to have any, anyone to mentor myself unless it's really high ticket, unless they really pay, pay well. Full project from, from scratch. This time we'll be following. Use an API to check you to check if the participants email is in the list. If yes, make a 30% sale on training. And we will use triggers, trigger handlers, cubals, uh, cubals, integrations. Uh, not integrations, you cannot say using integrations, you can say uh, callouts. Callouts to the API. You got this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's what we will be doing. Looks like some people are interested. So, yeah. gonna be fun that's gonna be i think that's gonna be a good a good good experience for people who only who just starting out in salesforce okay so we have this part Now I'm going to need to think, to think about the sequence and yeah, it's going to be, let's, let's watch some videos. What people, what people say about email sequence is that yeah, it's the right one. webinar okay this guy I remember he has really good videos let's let's check this one out they just want to walk away from the experience thinking and feeling that they learned something which is which is okay what's wrong with that they may not have bought your program but they feel like they left smarter hence they give the overall event a positive review in their mind this is the fighting entrepreneur the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs looking to change the world learn how to start to you about something i'm change the world i don't care about changing the world i can i can change my own life uh, and you 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 want me changing the world nope Thank you. Doing during this pandemic, uh, thunder, right? Um, webinars. I'm getting killer, 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 ridiculous, amazing, awesome. Ri I don't know if I have any other words. Results from webinars. And um, there's also something really big coming that we're going to do in the world of webinars that I'm doing with my partners, Ron Douglas and Andy Husong and the Webinar Con brand. If you've not seen it or heard it, man, you're missing out. So anyways, mm -hmm. let's talk about it. So how is it that I am putting on consistently 
two to 3,000 people into a webinar room every week, sometimes two or three times a week. It's nuts. And, and I can tell you, yeah. it's a pretty simple system. I, I wish I okay. could tell you I'm doing something like rocket science, right? But I'm not. There is a combination That's here good. with some long-term benefit of just, you know, I've been serving an audience for a long time. Thankfully, people like me, and so they show up for stuff. But I want to share with you five tips today, five strategies that I'm using to make webinars really work. Now, before I even go there, first and foremost, I have to do my little promo for you. Learn.com, L-U-R-N.com. Come on, go sign up. Seriously, it's free. There's an entrepreneur. It's going to be someone with my own, and I do, by the way. Now, here's the deal. We haven't released the full information about it just yet. It's called Webinar Confidential. Okay, this is not like your usual virtual seminars, all right? It's not going to be a $7 ticket to get in. I promise you that. We're bringing on some of the best speakers in the world. It's not a pitch fest. It's a total content ugliest page ever to close the door and get away from their screaming family so they come on the webinars so for the last two two and a half months i've been back to back back to back back to back we've been putting on events i've been putting post pictures up on my personal facebook and it's just like crazy we're maxing out go to webinar now we're looking for okay how do we get more than three thousand people on then we're doing you know we're doing evergreen webinars and they're maxing out and we got people flying in from all over the place all over facebook ads youtube ads it's, it's been nuts okay so how are we doing it? Why is it that Learn's doing this and other people, like I can hit a segment of Learn's list. I'm talking like a tiny segment. I can hit like 10% of our segment and get 900 people on, 1,000 people on with a segment versus like there's other people out there that'll blast away their list like crazy and get like 400 people on, you know? So what are we doing at Learn that's so different? Why is it that we're able to do these killer results? There's five reasons, all right? I wanna go through them for you. But again, I wanna Let's remind hear. you that their reports are coming out where I go through these in much more detail and in written format. Oh my God, he's selling so much. Just give me the information. Uh, first report. And then sell. And then I will decide if I, if I, if I want to buy from you. Is my whole five-step framework to how I do webinars. That's a free report. It'll come out. Go to webinarcon.com, pop your email address in. A second is out I will, that we did with the top marketers in the world in one room. We, Ron, myself, and Andy, we picked our favorite 10 secrets and we put them into a report without anyone's permission. <laughs> so we're going a little rogue. Um, but that would be awesome. So number one that I want to talk about today, how we're able to get these results is email sequences. Um, listen, I'm, you know, I, I create a narrative. My emails are not just, I have webinar coming up. I have webinar coming up. I have webinar coming up. Boring. And everyone's doing this. Listen, I create an event. Okay. I create an event. I create excitement. What am I going to do? Is there going to be something big on that webinar? Is there a hook an angle? Is there some kind of pivot to reality, like to our current time, an event, create an event. Okay. Create a launch, create fun, create excitement. I create excitement with every one of my webinars. It's not just a webinar. Like I create a reason, like we're going to do something fun. We're going to do a giveaway. We're going to have cash. There's a video. There's a new strategy. So-and-so just did this. So-and-so just did that. Like there's a story. There you go. Story. It's a whole story. I create, I create like a Netflix series out of it. And I, and I position that through my emails. So I want you to really think to yourself, when you do marketing, are you creating a story? Are you creating a narrative? Are you allowing people to plug into you, to plug into what you're teaching? That's really important, whether it be a webinar or not, okay? So number one, the email sequences through narrative, the story, focus okay. on that. Watch me, go ahead, get on the learn list, go to learn.com, get on the list, join. Let's do that. How do I get on the list? When was it? Wow, it was three years ago. They probably don't have the list anymore. Oh wow, he has so much, so many subscribers. Million and not that many views. And this is the, this is exactly the, this is exactly the thing. You can have as many subscribers as you want, but if no one watches you, it doesn't make any, any difference. Okay. That looks very much outdated, man. 
That looks so outdated. Ach, God. Yeah, I don't know. One year ago. What happened? So to here's you? three signs to know if a business partnership or any relationship to begin with has a chance or if it's going to make it. Now, I can't tell you how many business partnerships I have had. Okay, let's let's rather listen to this guy because this guy I know that he's still doing the thing, right? Even even that even if it's the video from three years ago, look, seven days ago. And he doesn't and again look at this, he has what sixteen point five subscribers, thousand subscribers, and yeah, he gets really, really few views. So the the point is not to get subscribers, right? The point is to learn how to good how to make a good videos. And that I think it shows very well that you can be super good. And I think what's popular, yeah, his biggest videos, 73,000. I always feel bad when I see those those things, like, I don't know, it's kind of a dead channel. I, he, I think he should start over with the, with a new channel. Mm, yeah. But he's at least still, still, still doing the thing, right? Yeah, so it's still at least there. He has testimonials. And book one, one call here. And you can book the call. Yeah, so it's good. Maybe you can't. Yeah, maybe you can't. But uh, anyway, so this guy, I think he has a little bit. I don't know. I like his videos much more. Let's see. Maybe this one's going to be fluff, but let's see. to unlocking profits and more leads and more audience from your business or for your customers i'm going to break especially for a lot of businesses like yourself who are maybe like one or two lists for your own business okay when when i have to skip almost two minutes before we go into th into the actual content that's a sign of that he should work on the videos in the link down below i've got a link to your own funnel business if you want to start. oh my god what you want to even if you're a small one person yeah, There's just show me the content, uh, man. In our daily calls to action, uh, even the formatting of the emails and stuff. What a lot of people do, the mistake they make is they jump straight into automated emails and they create these crazy long like email lists with like 70, 80 email autoresponders. All the guys who have talked about that and taught that in the past have now redacted that and said that it's not the way that it should be done. They're going to hate it. I'm like, why would they unsubscribe? If you're useful, if you're valuable, and I've got another video which I'll put um, up in up in the corner uh, about how many emails should you send per day. But I'm going to assume that you're comfortable with the idea of sending an email per day. And if you're not, I want you to get comfortable sending an email per day because this is basically what would you send to one person? If you were writing an email every single day, don't try and email your entire list every single day, although you're going to be sending it to your entire list. What would you write to just one person? That's all you need to worry about with your daily email. This is going to give you so much insight. Unless I'm willing to do something a thousand times, I'm not going to do it once for the sake of it. And I am willing to send an email to my list every single day. The main thing you want to look for is feedback. So you want to start testing your uh, subject lines. You want to start testing copy. You want to start testing calls to action. You want to start testing... Uh, email formatting, like I've just stripped all the HTML out of our emails now, and they're pretty much as if I've just written an email like an Outlook or a Newton to someone. Okay. And the reason this is so powerful is because it allows me to type really, really quickly. And ultimately, what we're looking for is really something resonated enough for people to start opening it. It increases the open rate and click rates on automation as well. Oh, yeah, all of that is actually blah, 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 blah again. Um... Yeah, all of that blah blah blah. I kind of <laughs> kind of understand how to do that. That's that's not that's not a secret or something here. Guys, you know what? I think I'm gonna finish the stream. For some reason I I feel a little bit a little bit low energy today and uh I think I'm gonna be today a little bit more productive if I do the work off stream. So I think that's going to be that's going to be it for the stream for today and see you everyone 
uh, tomorrow the same time 